Hello, in this video I'm going to take a look at a program called Stream Theater. It's a decent VR alternative, especially if you have a headset such as a Gear VR or Google Cardboard along with an old cell phone or in some cases tablet that can fit into those. It's pretty simple to set up program. Uh, it does not work on anything except for NVIDIA GPUs, so AMD users, sorry, you're going to have to find your own solution for this, but it uses the game stream technology built into NVIDIA GPUs. The second app that I would recommend, it's not required, but to get the full experience you're definitely going to want to have it, since Stream Theater doesn't actually use the head tracking built into the device and iRacing doesn't have a mouse look functionality built into it, you will need to download a program called Head Tracker. This uses your phone's built-in sensors to transmit to the PC and emulates the movements. We'll get back to that in just one second. Next, the apps that you'll need for your PC. If you have an NVIDIA GPU that's a 660 GTX or higher, you already have the game streaming built in, so you don't need to worry about that. The only other app that you really need to download, I prefer to use what's called OpenTrack. This is a tracking program that takes the sensor information from the Head Tracker app and translates it into head movement by emulating a track IR system. Of course, if you already have an existing track IR system, you can completely skip this step and free up some of your network bandwidth in the process. But since I don't have a track IR, I run the open track app in the background, along with head tracker transmitting my head movements. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need to do on your PC is to open your GeForce Experience pane and go to settings and go down to shield. Make sure that game stream is activated in GeForce Experience and since iRacing isn't recognized by the GeForce Experience as a game on your computer, you'll need to add that manually. You can just add one here using this option and just direct this toward the executable file for iRacing. You're not going to launch it this way, it's just the way you have to do it in order for it to re be recognized by GameStream. Once you've enabled GameStream on your GeForce Experience window, your next step is to go to your device and find where you installed your Stream Theater app. The initial setup on this it takes a few seconds. It will ask you to enter a PIN number that shows up on your computer screen. Uh, you will have to put your device into your headset at some point. The screen will prompt you to do that whenever you need to do it. Just go ahead and enter the PIN number that shows up in the co corner of your computer and once you enter that pin number and it recognizes your device you can go ahead and select it from the menu on the screen as the de device that you want to use. I mentioned before that we aren't going to actually run the iRacing executable through Stream Theater just because that's not how iRacing works so what you're going to need to do is go ahead and launch iRacing and it will recognize your headset or your phone as a head mounted display. It comes up with a prompt just like it does for VR drivers. It says would you like to use the HMD? You're going to want to say no to this otherwise it will attempt to generate iRacing in VR. We don't want to do that in this case. Once you've launched your session for iRacing and it's gone through its loading procedure you can go ahead and go back to your head mounted display and select the PC that you're operating on. This will bring up a list of GeForce Experience enabled games. You can cycle through them using whatever controls you have for your display. In the case of the Gear VR, it's the touchpad on the right hand side. You can scroll through it until you get to the iRacing that you added manually in the previous step. Select that and it will switch over to the actual simulator executable. It'll make the make the headset believe that you're running that just as you would be any other game that you select off the list. Once you've completed all these steps, iRacing should be visible on your headset display. 
From here you can go through the stream theater settings. I prefer to run it in the VR theater just because you can detach the screen from being stationary so it follows your head movements. Depending on the performance of your, of your device, this may not be an option. You can run it in whatever theater that you want. You can adjust the bit rate, you can adjust the zoom to make sure it fills your whole screen instead of having a box around it. Go ahead and customize it however you need to. One thing that I would highly recommend if you're using an older video card, which would really be anything 900 series or older, make sure that you take a look at the frame rate on the actual headset itself. It has nothing to do with the graphics options in the game. Take a look at the frame rate on the headset itself and decide between 30 and 60 frames per second. I know anything in the 10 series can run 60 frames per second no problem, but there have been reported issues with people with 900 series or older cards running the stream at 60 frames a second and getting a little bit of choppiness. As with any device that requires an internet connection for streaming, the proximity, the number of walls, basic location, of you in re relation to your router is going to make a huge impact on your performance. I would highly recommend only using the AC channel on your router, making sure that you have whatever process your router calls it disabled, whether it's band steering or whatever proprietary name it may have on your router. Make sure that that is disabled and that 5 GHz channel is running independently from the 2.4. If you have the band steering turned on and they're combined, for some reason, especially with Samsung phones, they really like dropping down to the 2.4. I don't know why, that's not my area of expertise, but just make sure to separate those channels out. You will see a massive performance difference. All right, I'm gonna stop talking now. I'm just gonna put some video on here of me actually using this on my rig. You can see that there's negligible amounts of lag. It's a very, very solid stream. It looks really crisp, clear, running at high resolution, just like you'd expect from a monitor. And I've got my full head movement. So if you have any questions, take a look at the comments. I've put all the links to the programs required on there. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll try to help you the best I can. Thanks.